Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this Stress and Burnout webinar as part of CREST's 2021 Cybersecurity Access Day. My name is David Slade. I'm a psychotherapist working in private practice. I've also worked with various organizations and charities um, <clears throat> where essentially my job is trying to help people deal with different uh, mental health difficulties such as anxiety, <clears throat> excuse me, depression, work-related stress, trauma, anger, and addictions. And I first became involved with stress and burnout in cybersecurity just over two years ago when I was asked to run the stress and burnout workshops and write a report for the Access Day back in 2019, So, which seems a long time ago now um, with everything that's happened since then. Um, more recently, I've produced two webinars for Crest looking at stress and burnout specifically related to remote working and returning to work after absence. And I've also helped with writing some top tips, guidance uh, and the like, all of which can be found on the Crest website. So today, as part of the Access Day, I just wanted to really signpost what work uh, has and is being done by Crest to tackle the, the problem of stress and burnout in the industry. And maybe to sort of filter out and reiterate some of the key messages related to preventing and minimizing stress and burnout, which ultimately will help attract more people into the industry and retain them um, once they're in the industry. I'll also include a little bit um, about some useful research uh, results that I came across whilst doing some panel discussions uh, in the US back in December. Now, some of you will also be um, participating in the Stress and Burnout workshop later this afternoon. So I look forward to seeing you there um, and hearing your views and experiences about where we are now, the, the challenges ahead and how we can deal with them. So this webinar is, is really about reminding ourselves why this work is important. Talk a bit about what Crest has been doing to introduce some interesting research that I mentioned just now. And, and, and really reiterate how to engage technical security professionals on matters related to stress and burnout and, and well-being, of course, more generally. And then I'd like to just recap some of those key practical messages from previous work, uh, previous webinars that I've done, and to briefly think about the way, the way ahead. So the numbers I've got on the screen here just really give a snapshot of, of some of the problems out there uh, that all have an impact on, on stress levels. So just looking at, the, looking at that list there, um, this, is a, this, this data comes from a, a state of the profession report um, over the last year or so. Um, over half of cybersecurity staff say they're sleeping poorly due to stress of the job. Just under half say they're overworked and that leads to stress and burnout. Um, and that has happened during the, the pandemic. Large proportion, 80%, um, said they felt more anxious and stressed during the, the pandemic. Um, and even though over half of the people said budgets have been rising, um, it's not. It's just not enough to, to keep up with the um, with the demand and the threats that are out there at the moment. Um, some of that, about 70% of people say that um, risks to data have increased due to remote working. Um, and also 65% say that the pandemic has made doing reviews, audits um, and the like more difficult. And this is a really important one, like 66% of people said that cancellation of training and education events has widened the skills gap, which was already uh, a, you know, a large gap um, from the information that I've gathered uh, over the last couple of years. So it's not um, the last two there, so it's just showing there are, there are some, good, uh, some good news um, out there, 
um, nearly 60% of, of respondents said that the, that the industry has improved defending systems um, last year, and about 60% said that the sector has improved its response to incidents and, and breaches. So there is a there is some there are some positive things going on. And this may be as a result of some of the things I reported on last year in terms of practical solutions and security overhauls. And as I mentioned uh, then, um, things like network segmentation, uh, network compliance policy reviews, uh, updating firewall rules, um, all of these all of these things that you can see there may have contributed into into improving security in many ways by taking a fresh look at things. And in the same way, it's it, it is a good time to review and reshape the way well-being and, and, and stress management is, is managed in the industry. So this is the this is the report that was produced a couple of years ago, and um, many of you might have might have seen this. Um, and it, it followed the workshops a couple of years ago and got people's um, views and 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 thoughts um, considered in that in that report. And it kind of provides a reference point regarding stress and burnout in cybersecurity. It's not comprehensive by any means, but it did it did provide a good uh, a good reference. And of course, a lot has happened uh, since then. Uh, different kind of stresses have have reared their heads, but the basic principles in the report remain valid and can help target prevention and mitigation of certain uh, stresses. Um, and these stresses broadly fall into the following categories. So the the things that you can see on on those bullet points there um, kind of split into two two different areas. Um, the self care behavior one at the top uh, is a is a sort of emotion focused coping uh, strategy, if you like, where you can make changes in your life to mitigate the impact of stress on it um, by adjusting uh, certain behaviors, how you look after your health, and so on. But the others tend to fall into a category of problem-focused coping, uh, concentrating on removing stresses from from you know people's experience, i.e., trying a sort of different tactic, attempting to work with colleagues differently, maybe thinking more tactically about the problem. Uh, and in other words, you know, in summary, really, it's it's trying to solve problems that are there and. These can be done in a number of different areas, such as management staff relationships, team models, and, 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 and how those ways of working are done, um, the actual working environment itself, training and, and education, as I, as I touched on earlier, that um, some of those respondents in, that, in those surveys were saying that that, that has uh, been curtailed somewhat during the pandemic. So it's really important to recognize these, these different areas that can contain stressors that can add to um, the whole story of stress and burnout in the industry. Another couple at the bottom there, uh, you know, how how technology and task automation may may have an impact on, on stress and burnout. And the, the broader subject of integration of security into systems and, and it being a more strategic approach rather than a sort of um, add-on part of the business that's not really not really talked about. So other work that uh, Crest has done on stress and burnout includes, um, like I said earlier, doing um, doing specific webinars targeting stress and burnout in different areas, such as remote working and, and returning to work. Uh, after some sort of absence for different for different reasons. Um, top tip sheets have been produced, which kind of condense um, things onto a sort of side of A4 for easy reference. And things like what we're going to be doing the, the, this afternoon, later on, the workshops, I think, are really important for allowing 
um, open open discussions where people can kind of feel secure in in talking about what what's really going on, um, what are the issues now in terms of stress and burnout, and how can we how can we start to address them. Crest also set up uh, a, a diversity and inclusion working group, which part of that is is considering stress and burnout. It's kind of an overarching theme that's considered in that group. So kind of everything really that, that, that that's being discussed and, and dealt with in that group does have a sort of interrelationship with stress and burnout. So it's it's seen as um, something central to all of those all of those things that are being um, looked at. And also really sort of uh, indirectly, I suppose, Crest has been trying to promote proactive measures to, to remove stressors um, as well as measures to sort of, you know, the self-care behaviour sort of stuff to mitigate the, the, the impact. And I think it's really important to, to note the it, it is critical to use a combination of both of these coping strategies you know, looking at the problem-solving approach and the you know sort of emotional self-care approach, um, is getting that balance right is 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 crucial to to people's well-being and um, you know minimising stress down to manageable levels. Now, I was involved um, in some panel discussions recently in the in the US and. Quite interesting. One of one of the panelists had had done some anthropological sort of social science research, looking at some of the reasons behind uh, excessive stress and and burnout in the industry. And one of the things they were looking at was looking at this sort of a, a model, a sort of anthropological model. So they had someone who'd been trained in these sort of anthropological methods who'd been sort of go, gone in and, and trained as a, an analyst and worked as an analyst for six months and observed the things that were going on and the types of issues that were that were relevant to to stress and, or contributing to stress and burnout and one of the key things that came out of this was looking at the interaction of human you know um, things that people are doing the technical side and management factors and what they found was there are a number of sort of vicious negative cycles connecting things like skills, i.e. how much someone had been trained, how much someone felt empowered in the role that they were doing, how much you know, risk they were allowed to, to take, if you like, um, how creative they could be and how they were growing in the role, learning from others and, and on the job um, sort of work. So what they were saying in this research was really that what the aim is is to aim for positive cycles, positive interaction between those those things like empowerment and automation and creativity. You know, so once that starts um, going in a positive direction, there's there's much more uh, increase in good morale. Um, people feel more secure. People feel more in control of what they're doing, and so on. So it was very interesting to see this. I mean, it kind of backs up what the, the, what we found in the workshops two years ago and, and subsequently, that how, how you're getting people's needs met is a very complicated um, thing. And there are they're not all sort of sit there in isolation. They're very much connected. So making someone feel more empowered, maybe make them feel more creative um, and you know they they grow more as people and, and develop better in the roles that they're in and probably progress to higher roles quicker so it's all it's all worth just just not understanding this in detail necessarily but just realizing that there there are very difficult um complex interactions going on here and of course sort of underlying all this is that um ha having a culture of inclusion rather than a sort of having to fit to sort of dominant norms in a, a sort of cultural fit is really important too, because this has a, as the working group has shown, really, it, it has a, a, a strong connection to people's levels of stress and burnout. So if people are working towards much a much better culture of, of inclusion, um, bearing in mind all these sort of interconnected factors, then, then things will definitely improve. 
So of course, th- there are some lingering sort of COVID nineteen anxieties out there, and and I'm not going to dwell on this too long. I mean, some of them these are these are pretty obvious, but um, it, it is worth mentioning this and being mindful of these when going forward um, to think about these sort of residual effects and to build that into sort of how people are managed and and so on um, and any ongoing issues that are going on. So just a few there, you know, that are relevant. Um, you know, the, the extra security pressures and risks that are out there has obviously caused a lot of extra work and so on. So that's created a lot of pressure. Um, people's insecurity about future opportunities. Thing, things have changed quite significantly. Some some good things in there, of course, um, but a lot of a lot of uncertainty. Um, so management has a very important role in in allaying a lot of the fears that might come from these these lingering anxieties from COVID. Another thing to think about is how we keep engaging employees um, in terms of in terms of thinking about people's well-being, their own and others around them. And some key considerations are for managers to to really think about, you know, having individual chats, treating people as individuals, thinking about, you know, really putting themselves in the in the position of those employees and thinking about what experiences they've had and what circumstances they are in. Um, is really important so that people, because every everyone's story is going to be slightly different um, in terms of how they feel stressed and what, what makes them stressed and so on. So it's really very much about listening carefully to, to that and, and generating a sort of open and honest culture ar- around those discussions. And of course, talking to employees uh, in terms of teams and about their future and how, how things are going to evolve and also, I've mentioned this before in in, in other uh, webinars that it's really important to have some kind of system uh, where managers can feel comfortable because not everybody feels comfortable doing this kind of thing. And and it's having something like these the Mind Wellness Action Plans, which have been well thought through, very practical, very easy to use on both sides, on both the employee and the and the and the managers. Um, I think that's that's really important to mention is is to have some of those very easy to use practical tools at people's fingertips um you know whatever level of of someone's well-being um, they're useful even when people you know people are, are doing okay and, and thriving and again something we've touched on in previous webinar is is managing remote working and um, just as a way of reminder that remote working um, does need to be handled carefully in order to sustain well-being and reduce stress, you know, having having good policies in the organization to deal with it, um, recognizing that remote working does require a certain amount of management time and effort to, to do it successfully. Um, also re- recognize that there, are, there can be negative impacts on mental health, some, some positive ones as well, of course, but um, it's always worth having that in mind making sure people are, are connected socially to others in the organization if that's possible and have as well as the, you know the professional interaction and of course remember one size does not fit all and this this message should just go you know throughout the whole all of what we're talking about whether it's diversity and inclusion people returning to work people's um, individual experiences of of how they've dealt with uh, the pandemic so it's really important to remember that one. And of course, trust is vital. So building trust between managers and employees in terms of remote working is, is, um, is vital. So recapping on some key messages from previous work. I don't apologize really for repeating this. I mean, I've talked about this many times before, but I think it's so important because Boiling these the things down to sort of easy to remember points, like keeping out the red zone by increasing people's sense of security, control, and status. Status one size does not fit all, and cultivating compassion. They're easy to remember those things, but what I think we need to do next is is working out how do we do that practically in the workplace, and the workshop after. T- the uh, webinar today is an opportunity to for people to think about how the above can be considered practically in the workplace so 
keeping people out of the red zone with compassion is is vital. And always remember that the three components that lead to burnout are excessive work pressure, which sometimes we can't remove completely, but there are things to be done um, that can minimize that. Unsupportive environments and poor self-care behavior. All of those, if you've got those going on, then you know, you're on a road to being burnt out. So the way ahead, where do we go next? Now, there's no easy, smooth road in terms of fixing the problem of burnout at an organizational level. However, what we can do is to make a concerted effort to continue the, to battle stress and burnout in cybersecurity, to run and take part in, in workshops like the one today later on, to, to, to really find out, to keep listening to people, what's really going on, and to have meaningful discussions about what needs to be done next. So it is, as I said earlier, in terms of you know, a lot of the security risks have been, have been um, reviewed how how they are handled, and I think it is now an opportunity to cement well-being into the way people work in this industry, and it just shouldn't be seen as just some a sort of add-on to a way of working. It should be fully integrated into people's everyday work experiences, and for people to show that they prioritise well-being, lead by example, and if. It's not doesn't come naturally. Then you know, perhaps you know, try and learn a little bit about how how small things that you can do can make quite a large difference to people's lives. So really, there's no easy way, as I said, but it's it's down to essentially hard work and commitment to make things a little better every day. So hopefully, see some of you at the workshops a bit later. Thank you very much. <laughs>